Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Dr. Nicole. And on today's episode, we're talking about energy healing, spirituality, and a particular healing modality called Reiki. We're going to delve into what Reiki is, how it can be helpful for children and really everyone in the family, along with how energy healing can combine with nutrition and other approaches to benefit kids and families, both physically and mentally. I'm really excited to have this conversation with my friend and colleague, Serena Poon, who I know you're going to love. Her energy and enthusiasm for this is just amazing, and I've been so excited to um, have this conversation today. So let me tell you a little bit about her. She is a nutritional energy practitioner who fuses her expertise as a celebrity chef, holistic nutritionist, and Reiki master to serve her A-list clientele from the likes of Jerry Bruckheimer to Carrie Washington and many more. Serena Loves was launched in 2019, a lifestyle brand blog and TV show that encompasses all the pillars of optimal health and well-being. This is achieved through her method of culinary alchemy, which is a combination of education, integrative and functional nutrition, and healing energy. She is also the founder of Just Add Water, a wellness line of super nutrient foods and supplements. Serena is also just an amazing person with a wealth of experience and a heart and a passion to support um, all of us on our journey towards better health. And so I'm so glad to have you here today. Welcome, Serena. Thank you so much. And thank you for just a beautiful welcome. And I thank you for having me. I'm so excited to dive into all of this with you and, and your audience. So yay, thank you. I'd love to start out. You you have a really interesting sort of story and journey as a healer, as a nutrition practitioner, I'd love to just start out by having you share, how did you get to this point of these different sort of modalities and things merging together into the kind of work that you do today? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I know it's, you know, sometimes people sort of hear my background and they're like, wait, she's a chef nutritionist. I get that, you know, but she also is a Reiki master. So you know, I actually dived into health and wellness because of my parents. You know, both my parents had cancer at a very, very young age. They were both in their 40s. Um, our daddy transitioned um, and, you know, our mom's still with us. She was diagnosed two months after he passed. But it was their experience at such a young age that had me start just diving into nutrition. I mean, I did nutrition in college because I was interested. Uh, because I love to eat really. And I just love food, but you know, my, I was there to be a, an attorney. So I was pre-law political science, but a love for food. So I just wanted to know what was in it. But when my parents got sick, I really started to dive into plants and herbs, you know, and things sort of outside of the wheelhouse of our doctors. Um, what we were guided and told to eat was definitely not what I guide and tell clients to, to do today. It was very, very basic, very fundamental, and quite honestly, very limited. So that's when I started to dive into it. Um, my parents both did diagnostic care, you know, so they did um, chemo and radiation, but they also did Chinese teas. So mm -hmm. just using traditional Chinese medicine, they drank these teas. So, you know, after my mom uh, finished her treatment, I decided to go to culinary school instead of law school to study the culinary arts to really understand I can use food as medicine, but in a way that really nurtured us, you know, it, it more than fed our body, it fed our senses, it fed our heart. And so, so that's what I did. I went to culinary school, studied more nutrition and continued. And to this day, I'm still always constantly learning and studying. Uh, and in the process of being a caretaker, which I think a lot of your audience can relate to whether you're a parent, um, and I feel like most people listening are, or you're caretaking for someone that you love. You know, we so often leave ourselves out of that priority yeah. list. And, and it's very natural because you're really focused on someone that you love. You're really focused on making sure that they feel well, that they're happy, that they're healthy. And you forget that you're a part of that equation. And so I did that. And, um, and so in that process of caretaking for my parents and then for other people after that, I ended up having a lot of health issues of my own. So I had just created so much inflammation in my own body um, that I had to have surgery. And, uh, and that surgery was just to remove some damaged tissue 
And then from that surgery, I got MRSA, mm. MRSA, which is a deadly staph infection. And then that kind of became my health journey for the next several years, multiple surgeries to try and get this, this infection, you know, this bacteria out of my body. And in that process, I, cause I was doing everything right, you know, physically, right? I was actually, I was doing everything right. I knew what to do with my body nutrition wise, but I was still kind of grappling with this healing journey and this infection. And I started to work with an energy uh, practitioner. She was a master really, and uh, committed as you do the gym, you know? So some of us can get ourselves to do 30 minutes to an hour of exercise every day but we might not do have a mindful practice. Mm-hmm. We might do meditation, you know, we might not be serving that, what I call energetic body, which still makes up all of us, right? So I committed to working with her on a regular basis. And that, that really started my path towards mm-hmm. spirituality, towards mindfulness, meditation, and what led me to to study Reiki. Mm -hmm. So she didn't practice Reiki. She sort of just had her own, Mm -hmm. the Noel way, you know, and (laughs) it's so powerful. And uh, she, after about eight months of working with her, she had me fly out to meet her Mm -hmm. and stay with her in Santa Fe to teach me everything that she knew, Mm -hmm. which was amazing, but very overwhelming. And so I felt that I needed structure. So Mm -hmm. I studied Reiki and, you know, we'll dive into Reiki in just a minute, but uh, it just, it was just sort of the modality that I chose to mm-hmm. kind of really understand energy work. Mm-hmm. And so I learned that that combination of something tangible, like our food our supplements, you know, tangible activities with energy work and really addressing that energetic body and speaking up, that's what really gives you optimal healing and optimal health and wellness. So that's kind of how it all came together. Sounds at first like it's all over, but then when you hear the journey, you're like, oh, it was actually quite organic how that all came together. Well, that's why I wanted you to share the story because I think it is so fascinating how everybody's different personal experiences and, you know, experiences with their schooling and and what they delve into, how it all does come together into this amazing sort of fused um, approach. And you bring so many of these important pieces. I know that some listeners are familiar when we say things like energy, energy healing. Some are familiar with that. Some are going, I feel like maybe I've heard that. Is that kind of a woo-woo thing? And then some are like, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. So let, let's <laughs> delve into that to help give people a foundation around that. What are we really talking about when you're talking about, you know, this energy in the body, when you're talking about um, Reiki energy healing, what are we really talking about there? Okay, great. So, so, and I'll, I'll just, I'll just be really basic about it in case there are people who have no idea. So when we're talking, so Reiki, essentially it's a, it's a healing art. It's a practice with it. And the roots of it are from, um, from Japan, you know, Japanese origin. And basically the word Reiki uh, means universal life. So Rei is universal life and Ki means energy. So Reiki altogether is universal life energy. And what we're essentially doing when when there's a practitioner that's working with Reiki, what's happening is the person is almost, and you know, you do have to have uh, you know an open mind and kind of be open to the notion that everything is energy. Everything in the universe is energy. And there is science to prove that, right? Yes. So so you're essentially almost like a conduit. You're a ch- you're almost like a channel, and you're you're connecting intentionally that universal energy, and you're you are directing that energy to a person, a place, a thing, somewhere where there needs to be, where there needs flow. If there is something blocked, if there's a healing, if there is an injury, a wound an area that needs support or flow. So that is, you know, it conceptually might be kind of hard to understand what that means. And typically with Reiki, what we're doing is we're working with the chakras and some people don't know what a chakra is. Right. So a chakra, the word chakra comes from the Sanskrit language and it basically means circle, you know, or wheel. 
And throughout our body, and this is with Ayurvedic practices, you know, say like Chinese medicine, like there's there's a belief if you know what chi is, right? So chi, prana, you've probably heard these words before. Chi, prana, life energy, reiki, it's all kind of the same thing. Right. And, and these chakras are, and there's more than just seven. We kind of just focus on seven because that's like the basic seven, but there's more than seven. The seven main chakras are these energy centers that, that are, they make up, they're in alignment with our organ systems. Mm -hmm. So from the base of our spine to the top of our, to the top of our head, there are these energy centers and they kind of spin. And this is, it kind of maintains the balance of your energetic body but it's also the connection with what you cannot see. So this, this universal life energy that we're speaking of, and then what you can see and feel in touch, which is your body. And so these energy centers, they're, they are, um, they get blocked, you know, no different than our arteries get blocked and our lymphatic system can get blocked. It's the same thing with our energy centers. And so when you, when you're working with, let's say a Reiki or energy practitioner, what their job is, or part of their job, is to kind of go through your seven chakras, no different than a doctor would go through all your organ systems, and then they, they, they see where the blocks are. Or if maybe the, the chakra spins, if it's everything sort of healthy and flow, it spins in a, in, a, in a direction with ease. Again, no different than like our circulation, you know, of our body. Um, and when you have a good, healthy microvascular system, you know, the blood flows evenly. So, so that's what an energy practitioner is doing. It's what a Reiki person is doing. They're kind of going through those seven chakras and they're checking to see if there's flow and where there isn't, then they do the work to either unblock it and to make sure it's flowing and flowing with ease. You know, it's not in all different directions mm -hmm. and that's what they're doing. And that can happen. And, and so within each, as I was saying, energy center there, it aligns with your organ system. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say we're talking about the first chakra, which is the root chakra. Your root chakra, you know, that is what we call your stability, you mm -hmm. know, and your security. And when someone is feeling ungrounded or stressed or anxious, that usually means there's either a block or something that's imbalanced in that, in that chakra system. That chakra system also kind of governs your blood, you know, your blood, part of your adrenal glands, just like that lower half, half of your body, so your legs, your joints, your muscles, all of that. So when you're feeling grounded, you know, if you when you when you stand with your feet shoulder width apart and you kind of like stand with strength and you're grounding actually. And that makes you feel stronger and that makes you feel more in control. So all of it's kind of in alignment with each other. Once you have a sense of what they represent, you know, where they are in your body, uh, where it aligns with your physical body um, and the needs of the organs in, this, in the physical body, it will make a lot more sense. Yeah. I, and I think that that's a, a great overview for people who are unfamiliar, even people who have heard of it and just aren't sure. Um, it is a different way of thinking about things, but it's important to know that this is rooted in like thousands of years of tradition, like Chinese medicine, I mean, you know, has been around forever, um, you know, Ayurvedic medicine, all of these things. So, so it is, it's grounded in these real principles of healing approaches that have been around forever. And that actually there's, you know, some good research on um, and, and the piece that you said about everything is energy. I mean, people go, oh, you know, that's woo. That's just grounded in physics. I mean, that, that's, just, you, you know, people think of this as, oh, spiritual. Oh, it's, it's like, no, actually that's, you know, a principle of physics. Like these are real, real things. Um, and so I think it's important for people to understand that just because this way of talking about or thinking about things may be different from the allopathic medical or mental health model that people in the US or Western countries are familiar with, that actually these things are very well accepted and grounded in principles of healing that have been around you know, the world forever um, and, and grounded in real principles of science. And so I think that that's just important for people to know because sometimes we hear about something newer that just doesn't easily fit with what we've yeah. understood and we go, oh, that can't really be a thing. Right, right, absolutely, and it's and it's and I love that you're just reminding people of that. You know, these are principles that have been in practice for hundreds, you know, 
thousands of years. And, and, and if, and again, when we're talking about physics and science, I mean, if you think about what an atom, like the, what is inside of an atom, I mean, that is, that's just energy. And yeah. so, and so it just, I think it's just about a different perspective, yeah. you know, and then once you can look at it from that different perspective, a lot of it does make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the really interesting things, like this idea about energy, one of the ways that I think about it, and, and you can tell me if you think this is, um, you know, accurate or not, but I think about like just the energy that, that maybe we don't label as that, but that we experience like a vibe with people. For example, like when we're in a situation and suddenly you start feeling like not so good about something like that's a response to the energy of that situation or that other person or people that you feel a certain way around like you're responding to the energy of them and what they're putting out that that's I think a tangible way like when I think about my kids who know me so well like they can come into a room and sort of read my energy right away without me saying anything like sort of sense whether it's a good time to you know ask me about something or not like mm -hmm. We all have those experiences and putting the word energy to that is just another way of thinking about that. But to me, that that was what started to make this sort of, um, you know, make make more sense. It was like, oh, yeah, I, I get that. Like the energy that we experience with other people or around other people or in situations. Is that do you think that's a helpful way for people to think mm -hmm. about that? Well, yeah, it really is. And I, I quite often use it as well because pe I feel like everyone can really relate to exactly what you're saying, which is that vibe. I mean, we use words like energy. There's also frequency. There's also resonance. I mean, these are words used in science, right? So that's a perfect way to to have someone connect. And, and, and you know, when you are, exactly what you said, when you are in a room or a situation with someone and sometimes it feels different you know something feels off something can feel good something can feel great it can feel it can feel like yucky really it can feel like not in alignment with you that is essentially your energetic vibration your frequency um connecting with someone else's and and there may not be alignment because you may be at different frequencies you know you're vibrating your energies are at different levels and so when we're talking about Reiki, when we're talking about energy work, the goal is to always have everything sort of in balance. Mm -hmm. You know, you want things to be balanced. What happens, no different than what you're talking about, Nicole, with feeling someone's vibe, feeling someone's energy, mm -hmm. you know, knowing as you walk into the room, oh, that person might be in a good mood or a bad mm -hmm. mood. That's happening within our body. Mm. So within our bodies, if there is an imbalance with these different energy centers, there's dissonance within our body. Mm. And so that is what can create uh, in a tangible form, um, say disease, right? Or discomforts within your physical body. That is your physical body responding to your energetic body where there is not alignment. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So yeah. that's how our physical body tells mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. It makes so much sense. And in fact, I'm thinking about a patient that I saw even this morning who was describing without using those words, exactly that, like this sense of things just are not coming together within me. Like, I feel like I'm fighting against my body all the time. I feel like, you know, just describing exactly that. And I think for so many of our kids who have neurodevelopmental disorders or who have mental health challenges or just are kind of dysregulated, this is a great way to think about that. Like we don't have a good balance within them they don't have ease within their body, within their mind. They don't have ease within their environment. And it's this constant just trying to, you know, figure out how, how to manage that then in the day-to-day -day of life. And that comes out as a ton of behavioral symptoms, as a ton of emotional symptoms, you know, all of these kinds of things, as well as all the physical symptoms we see with that, right? Because most of these kids with these kinds of behavioral or learning or developmental challenges also have a whole lot of body physiological imbalances, whether we're talking about constipation or we're talking about, you know, digestion problems or chronic headaches or, you know, whatever it might be. And so I think this idea of balancing those energies, balancing those systems 
it really makes sense when we just step back and think about what we observe in kids who are having these kinds of issues. Absolutely. And the whole thing is kids, you know, even as adults, right? We, as we have so often a hard time expressing ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? And as we, I think kids up to a certain age, there's no filters, they speak, you know, their hearts. And then things happen, of course. And then that can, that can affect their voice, what they think is okay to say, not not okay to say, what sometimes they have a hard time just even articulating their feelings and their emotions and all that energy is stored inside and there Mm -hmm. isn't really a way to express it. Kind of, uh, you know, uh, adding to what you're talking Mm -hmm. about when Mm -hmm. it's when you're speaking of some of the um, some of the frustrations mm-hmm. and, and mental yeah. wellness around it, Reiki. Even if you're if you can't if you're not teaching your child how to do it, mm-hmm. um, as a parent, you know, or or practitioner, if you're already a practitioner in some field of medicine, it's something that just complements what you're already yeah. doing. And that's the beauty of it. It literally just, and you don't really need, you don't need any tools. Mm-hmm. You know, you just need uh, you, you need focused attention and just being very present and still, and just kind of tuning into your child, tuning into yourself to, to have your body, your physical body tell you where, where do I have discomfort right now? Where is it that I need a little bit more support? And it's your physical and your mental and your energetic body kind of all working together to speak to you. So, you know, let's say, let's say you were, you mentioned constipation. Mm -hmm. It's a a great, happens to kids a lot. And it's not always the food, you know, you have taken out dairy and I've taken out this, my Mm -hmm. kids on a dairy free, gluten free diet, and they get all the fiber and the fruit and they're still having some constipation issues. What may be surprising to a lot of people listening is that that so often comes from that solar plexus, you know, that third chakra is out of alignment or blocked for your child because that's our, that govern that chakra governs our personal power. And, you know, and, and I, and with children, sometimes the constipation happens because it's this unconscious way of control Mm -hmm. um, that they're trying to have some sort of control and exercise control on their physical body and control in their decision-making process. So, so sometimes just a blocked solar plexus, which also governs our digestive system, um, Mm -hmm. our liver, our gallbladder, our small intestine, our stomach, all of it, uh, that, that can contribute to constipation on a very unconscious level Mm -hmm. for kids. So uh, I know it may sound like it's sort of out there, but it is just a complementary practice mm-hmm. or an exercise that you can do as a parent or as a practitioner. And you know, you're not adding in mm-hmm. you're adding in any medication, you know, you're not adding in any mm-hmm. even supplements to mm-hmm. it. And it's something that can really help shift mm-hmm. uh, shift the bowels and shift that area. Mm-hmm. So I'm open to any questions you might have about yeah. that. Well, I, I was going to actually just tell a little story related to that because, I mean, I've always been open to all different kinds of, you know, modalities. And so had a, an awareness of an openness around, you know, energy healing and energy medicine for a long time. But this was, gosh, this was probably 17 years or so ago now. I had a patient here at the clinic. Um, she was nine severe, severe GI problems, um, which would lead to just impacted constipation, the type of constipation that she'd be in the ER every, you know, a few weeks to get cleaned out. Um, Also happened to be quite significantly um, affected by autism and, you know, some other kinds of issues. And they had done all the medical things. We were doing all of the good, um, you know, uh, holistic nutrition kinds of things, all of that. And still, And her mom came to me and said, you know, I heard about this guy who's coming to town. He does, and it wasn't Reiki, but it was a, it was energy healing. And she's like, I feel like, you know, what do we have to lose? I'm just going to try it. And even with my openness, I was like, okay, this is probably not going to do anything. But in my mind, I was like, you know what? It's probably going to be a relaxing experience for like, that's fine. Go ahead and do it. And I will tell you what it made 
a world of difference for her. They did a few sessions over the week that he was in town and I could not believe the shift in this child's GI system in starting to have normal functioning bowels and bowel movements, the motility issues improved. Her then, because obviously things were moving through, her appetite, her willingness to eat more things. And I thought, well, okay, there, there you go, right? It, it's th these things, you know, we may not understand that they may be outside the realm of traditionally what we've thought about with addressing these things. But that was really my moment where I was like, okay, these, these types of modalities, this type of work can make a profound difference yeah. even with all these other things that have been done. And, and it was really a turning point for me to realize like how powerful this can be. Yeah, no, and thank you so much for sharing that. I think it's a, uh, it's it, and that is a, such a great example. And you, you coming from you and your physician, and to know that you you experience and to share that with your audience, I'm I'm so grateful for you to share that story. And I'm actually going to use that story when I turn <laughs> off because yeah. it happens so often, especially with children, and that because they're in development, they're trying to figure out who they are. They don't. You know, they're and they're trying to figure out what their roles are, what they can say, what they can't say. Mm -hmm. So much of that, and that is really kind of ground rooted in that um, those lower chakras, mm -hmm. and and supporting those lower chakras. So when when I work with in my method, you know, we and we mm -hmm. touched upon it, culinary alchemy. What I because it's so hard for people to really conceptualize that which is not tangible. I use food and mm -hmm. supplements to kind of bring the tangible, bring the untangible to the tangible. Mm -hmm. So to make it very, very simple for anyone, not just, you know, parents, but I talk a lot about eating the rainbow, you know, eating the color of the rainbow and how there are specific foods that really support each chakra mm -hmm. and each chakra system. So let's say the solar plexus, and it's and I say eat the rainbow because every chakra is sort of governed by a color mm -hmm. that's reflected in the auras. And so, and that's a different deeper, right. you know, that's a different conversation. Right. But let's just let's just assume we're gonna work with the seven chakras mm -hmm. instead of you know the 144 that there are. And let's just work on the the seven basic colors that are reflected in these chakras with the solar plexus that um that sh that third chakra that governs the, the digestive system that is reflected in the color yellow mm -hmm. so to make it really easy for people to remember what to eat you know i say just eat things eat foods that are sort of yellow mm -hmm. and that's in a lot of like legumes mm -hmm. uh soluble fibers whole grains dietary carbohydrates mm -hmm. um uh, yellow color foods, obviously, sure. they're all foods that if you have a hard time remembering the whole giant list, they all fall within this space of supporting that solar plexus, mm -hmm. which is supporting the digestive system. Mm -hmm. And just once you can allow that, um, once that physical body is unblocked, like you said, you know, mm -hmm. she's super impacted from the patient. Once it's unblocked and there's flow throughout the whole system, mm -hmm. And then that just helps the whole body feel more at ease. Mm -hmm. And then she's also able to bring in the proper nutrients and actually mm -hmm. absorb the proper nutrients. So sometimes it's uh, just one or two uh, things within our, our energetic body mm -hmm. that need to be balanced and just sort of allow flow for it. And then it reflects in our physical body. Mm -hmm. But with these type of foods, eating these foods that are in alignment with the colors, already helps you eat in alignment with the chakra system mm -hmm. that just makes it easier for people to remember yeah that's so interesting that it that that does really simplify and it makes it tangible i love that that's what you're doing because it, it 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 makes it like real like okay this is something i can do i i'd love to have you talk about because i think people are probably curious like what does this look like like when you say you're you're doing reiki or, or like the child that i mentioned like going for a, a healing session of this yeah. can you just describe so that people have a picture in their mind of what that looks like i mean i don't know what images people have of what this might be but i, I just want you to clarify for people what it actually looks like absolutely because i do a lot of digital work as well yes. so yeah. now ever since 2020 you know yeah. things really shifted to that space and people often question uh, whether or not distal work is effective, mm -hmm. not in person, yeah. but it absolutely is because energy flows yeah. everywhere, you know, and we are all again energy, and so we're all connected. 
So when I do a session on someone, whether it's in person or distally, usually we have, you know, you're going to be laying down. So we were laying down on a massage table and I usually walk someone through a little bit of breath work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I kind of do a raking and clearing on the room to begin with. I have all my tools to see behind yep. me. Yep. Uh, so uh, so we kind of clear the room so that this is sort of like mm -hmm. your favorite space. No different than if you are saying, listen, honey, take care of the kids and the dog for the next 45 minutes. Yep. I'm going to go take a bath and this is going to be my sacred space. Yeah. What we're doing is we're creating that sacred space, that sanctuary for you. You're laying down and we'll go through the breath work. It's very, very, just like a short, it's almost like box breathing. I call it the 444, but we do a little breath work where we're already um, bringing in light. Uh, I call it light, so it's your it's tangible for you because you can visualize light, mm -hmm. but it's energy that we're bringing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I start at your crown and I start working. So I will some sometimes it's hands on, sometimes it's hands off. It mm -hmm. just really depends on what I'm invited to do. Mm -hmm. A lot of practitioners will touch. There will be some hands on, and when you go through the when you go through the um, the teachings and you become a master, you're given symbols. Mm -hmm. So there's different symbols that um, I will do, you know, with my hands. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm actually doing it in my mind's eye, but I'll do it with my hands mm -hmm. over different areas, depending on what I'm picking up on from this energetic read of what's going on in that area of your body. So, you know, that, that first one, that's your crown chakra. And that kind of governs, you know, your head, that, which is basically like the head and above your head, that area. And then we'll walk through, we'll go to the third eye, that's sort of in the center of your head, like near your forehead, and then down to your throat chakra, and then down to your heart and your sacral. Your sacral is sort of like kind of where your diaphragm is, is not quite your stomach, but in that region, just right below the heart. And then down to your sacral, that's where your sexual organs are, that's where your sacral are, your reproductive organs, and then down to your root, which is the base of your spine. Mm -hmm. So I spend time in each area of your body um, checking, basically mm -hmm. checking to see if there's blocks and things that need to be released and I will, I'll be releasing. And every practitioner kind of has their own sort of visual technique as to how they do it. But for me, because I can feel and see the energy and I can see if there's blocks and I can, things come up, very interesting. So when you do a detox, mm -hmm. things come up to the surface. Like you've got to kind of purge all all the toxins and mm -hmm. so anyone who's any done, done any type of cleanse or detox mm -hmm. knows what's coming out of your body mm -hmm. the first couple of days and then what's coming out of your body towards the end when you're done now you've like cleansed and purged all these toxins the same thing is sort of happening energetically when i'm doing a reiki session so things are coming up to the surface to be removed mm -hmm. and then we're allowing that energy to that chakra um, that energy center to make sure it's flowing, you mm -hmm. know, so no different than, again, I mentioned your lymphatic system or your, your, your mm -hmm. blood circulation, like you want it to be flowing. And we work and we go all the way, I go all the way from the top of your head, all the way to your feet. Mm -hmm. And so depending on, you know, how long the session is, sometimes I have people turn over and then we work on the back of you. Mm -hmm. uh, some practitioners will, will place, they'll put their hands underneath you. So mm -hmm. it, have any flip over because most people often just kind of like they either fall asleep or right. they are astral surfing in a different dimension they're just yes. you know, not super conscious so we can we place our hands underneath mm -hmm. to rest kind of the chakras on the back side mm -hmm. and so we go through this process until everything sort of cleansed mm -hmm. um everything is like open release anything we don't need um make sure everything's in flow and then we sort of close up the session and let's call it a zipper, you know, we kind of like close up the session so that this is all in your bubble, your energy and your, you know, safe and protected and everything that you don't need that we've now pulled out of you is outside of mm -hmm. your bubble. And yeah. so that's basically like what a session looks like. Mm -hmm. um, then oftentimes emotional um, traumas will come up. Uh, sometimes people might have like thoughts might come up, memories, different people. Um, different things will come up during the session, not just for me as a practitioner, but for, for the person receiving. And then afterward, sometimes people feel super light, you know, like they just got charged up with a battery pack. 
sometimes people are very tired uh, and they need to just lay and rest. And sometimes people purge, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes people have to use the restroom. Some people may even throw up like they purge. Mm -hmm. And it's not a negative thing because that's literally just those, and it's like, it's, it's almost like energy toxin. Yeah. Um, and so those are basically the things that can happen. It's very, very big on, make sure you drink a lot of water mm -hmm. before a session and then after, because water helps energy flow, mm -hmm. water helps everything flow, Yeah, you know? So hydration on all accords are very important. Yeah. So whether you're talking physical or energetic, mm -hmm. hydration is really important. So that's what the hydration looks like. Yeah, I think it's so helpful to take people through that. And for those of you who are thinking, oh, I have a kid who will not lie still on a table, or I have a kid who doesn't tolerate touch. The amazing thing about these modalities is because you're working with energy, you can do that in so many different ways. I've seen practitioners do this with kids, even who start out running around you know, the room, and then you watch them get stiller and calmer and more settled over the course of the session. I mean, so there, there's so many different ways to approach this. And so I just want parents to know that even if you're thinking, oh, my kid would never lie still there. They don't have to, because we're working with energy, we can just be in the space with them. And yeah, many kids, even if they have, you know, um, sensory issues or other kinds of things that can feel a little bit scary to them in new types of environments around people. What I have found is that the people who tend to do this kind of energy work the energy they bring to it, kids gravitate towards it. Like I have watched children who are highly like hypervigilant, anxious, resistive to everything, just sort of melt and like attune to people, you know, it, therapists are working with them, whether it's an energy worker or someone else. And that, that's really about the energy of that. I think that so many of these kids are super, super sensitive to everything in and around them. And so this energy work of sort of helping to contain that, to ground that, it's, it's so soothing to them. Well, yeah, because if you think about it, kids aren't, they haven't yet developed the, and they might not have the tools yet. They're in that growth process mm -hmm. of discerning what stimulations they need, like what yeah. they need. And yep. so they're so overstimulated, even if you're mindful about uh, the time they spend on devices, mm -hmm. you know, on the computer or TV, whatever it is, even if you are mindful and there's limits that you give them in terms of that exposure, just life, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, uh, where we're at right now and the way, uh, how the pace at which life is now, mm -hmm. kids, it's so, they're so, they're just so overstimulated mm -hmm. and they don't have the ability to discern what they need and what they don't need. Mm -hmm. And most of them don't really have the tools yet mm -hmm. to bring themselves, to calm themselves down mm -hmm. and perform their own nervous system, which is why I think it's amazing that some schools teach meditation. Yeah. You know, some schools teach breath work. Mm -hmm. um, some schools teach yoga yeah. uh, because it's so important. It's just giving the kids a tool that they can do on their mm -hmm. own. And, as, you know, parents and practitioners, just that little bit of breath work. Um, or a little just kind of getting that into the practice of their daily routine mm -hmm. is so beneficial because it's a tool that they can use on their own, mm -hmm. even on a subconscious level, they're able to do that. Yeah. So, so yeah. And I think that's just, you know, it's just growing up. I mean, as adults, we, we start to right. figure it out, right. In our twenties, right. right. <laughs> you start to figure out like, wow, I need to maybe do this thing called meditation, right? I need to, you know, I need to, I'm so stressed all the time. Like, what can I do mm -hmm. to lower my stress? Yeah. And so we do that as adults, but kids mm -hmm. need it too. They just have, you know, their, their stimulants are different. And their ability to discern what mm -hmm. they need, what they don't. It's different. And, and I think it's interesting because so often what I talk about with parents is that how they are in interactions with their kids dictates a lot of how their kid is. So the energy that we bring to an interaction with our child. So this really means we've got to learn how to manage our yeah. stimulation, how to manage and rein in and have flow and energy working for us, because that's the, that's the energy we bring to our interactions, our parenting, you know, um, with our kids. And so it, it becomes so important for us as well as our children. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, they, they read, they read us. Yep. No different than they read the room. You know, mm -hmm. as you start 
earlier, just at that vibe and that frequency, they read that. And so, you know, something that I teach people all the time is, and since we're talking about, you know, culinary alchemy and using tangibles, using food, when you're preparing food for your kids, when you're preparing food for your family, um, one of the best things you can do is is exercise this practice, you know, this practice of presence when you're doing it. So something that I, I'll share with your audience and I, I share it quite often is um, just that extra step that you can take if you have a gratitude practice. So even if you don't have a gratitude practice, mm -hmm. you can start, it's never too late. Um, and if you do have one, whether or not you journal it or you say it out loud or you just say it in your head when you wake up or when you're taking a shower, whenever you're doing it, what you can do is just take that practice one step further and connect with one or two things on that list. It doesn't mm -hmm. need to be 10, just like one thing, two things, something that you're deeply grateful for. So it could be your partner, it could be your children, it could be, I don't know, your favorite meal at your favorite restaurant, mm -hmm. whatever it is that you feel like connecting to, connect to it to the until you have almost like a physiological response. Mm -hmm. So connect to, you know, thinking about your partner, how grateful you are for them until you can actually smell them mm -hmm. or feel the warmth of them next to you. Like just take that extra moment or two to connect to that feeling. Now you've made, now you've made this connection with your body and mind, your emotion, your heart and your energetic body. You know what that feels like. Take this feeling, and then when you go to make a coffee or your tea mm -hmm. or a smoothie or you're making dinner or lunch, just take a moment to now redirect this energy, this feeling that you have because you're physically connected with this feeling. You know, whether it's warmth, whatever it is, maybe you were salivating because you're thinking, mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> Connect to that feeling and then intentionally, intentionally direct that feeling and that energy into that which you are now going to put back into your body, mm. that which you are now going to put back into the body of the people that you love, your, your, you know, your partner, your spouse, your kids, whoever, and you're going to do this anyway, you're going to eat anyway, you're going to feed them anyway, mm -hmm. it's just one extra step that you can do mm -hmm. this kind of thing, and you will see a difference, mm -hmm. because First of all, you've now shifted yourself into a much more parasympathetic state. So you've grounded yourself. Your more, whatever you put into your body, your digestive system will be able to receive and process better because it's in a relaxed state to do so. And then that frequency, that energy is now in what you've prepared to give to someone else. Mm. Like I would say just try it. See if there's a difference before you send them off to school. Mm -hmm. Try that and see if it's as much as a you know a rush to mm -hmm. get into the car to get to school on time, or you know just see if there's a shift if you can do that as a parent, you know yourself. Mm -hmm. And and I know it's going to make a change for you, yeah. but it may very well make a change for your kids as well. I love that. Such a practical tool and something that, as you said, we can embed, you know, we're feeding kids all the time. We're prepping food for ourselves, for them all the time. So such a, such an efficient thing to work in as well. And, you know, it's interesting as I heard you walking through that, I, I thought about, you know, the times that people have said things like, you know, the, the, the most important ingredient in any meal is love or food made with love really it it tastes different our experience of that food is different and that's what it brought to mind and, and I really had not thought about that before in terms of practically then thinking about well how can we harness that and use that for good in our food preparation for ourselves and our kids so I think that I what a what a one that that's beautiful thank you you're so welcome and you know just try it it, it really will make a difference mm -hmm. and you're so right. It is that secret ingredient. You know, that's why, you know, your grandmother's recipe for mm -hmm. your favorite pie will only taste that way from her. Even mm -hmm. if she swears to you, she <laughs> every single ingredient, she didn't leave anything out yeah. and you will do it exactly as directed mm -hmm. and it won't taste the same. Yeah. It's her energy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's her energy, her frequency, her love that she's put in that comes from her directed to you. So that's why it'll taste different, mm -hmm. but you can add to that for your kids' meals. 
And it, it, then it, it extends out to, you know, people being able to think about all the ways they could do that just in other activities too. How can we be intentional about bringing that type of energy to giving our kids a bath or tucking them in at night or, you know, uh, helping them through a difficult moment that they're having or dealing with their next tantrum? How can we tap yep. into that energy within ourselves to bring it to those situations, mm -hmm. not only helps us, but helps them. So it really opens up all kinds of possibilities for how to utilize that. Yes, 100%, it mm -hmm. absolutely does. It's just, you know, I, I, as again, I just use this as sort of like um, that tangible tool, but really it's just mm -hmm. a starting point. Yeah. And, and you will, exactly as you say, you'll realize, oh, I can bring this in all these other situations and all these other dynamics, because now you know what that feels like. And that's the most important step. It's just like making that physical, that physiological connection to your heart, your mind, your energetic body. And now that you know what that feels like, you can just say, oh, I can just do that here. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. I have a million more questions I could ask you, but I know that we need to wrap up. And this was so, this was just such a wonderful, um, enlightening conversation. I know people are going to have lots of questions, want to learn more. Where can people find out more about your work, all of the great tools and things that you offer? Where should they go? Yes. Uh, thank you for asking. So, so you, they can go to my website. It's serenaloves.com um, or I'm quite active on Instagram uh, that's chef Serena Poon and I th that's our handle for all my social platforms pretty much so you can go to any of the social platforms but I would say Instagram uh, and you and everything kind of directs you everywhere else. so Instagram and the website are probably the two best places to to get a hold of me Awesome. And we'll put all the information for that in the show notes. And I know that you've got your um, show that is on Instagram as well, which has features great people, like lots of amazing, just so many amazing resources that you provide. So really encourage all of you listening to check that out. Um, Serena, really want to thank you for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedule um, to be with us today, to share this really um, important, impactful information with our listeners. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful and I hope to see you soon. Yes. Next, I, I, I will be in LA or you'll be here or something. We'll, we'll connect soon. And thank you as always to all of you for being here and for listening. We will catch you back here next week for our next episode of the Better Behavior Show.